They call it the Acer Predator Helios 300, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, I've done a full unboxing of this laptop if you're curious about my thoughts on the build quality and overall first impressions, and I'll link that video up at the end of this video. But in this video, we're going to cover the things that I did not cover in that one, such as the performance, the color accuracy, the webcam, and just a few more features that I found as I've been reviewing this laptop over the past two weeks. First and foremost, the color gamut range. This laptop has good color gamut range, not the most stellar in the world. You're gonna miss out a little bit on that Adobe RGB, but the sRGB is solid. Now we do have a 144 Hertz screen and a fairly bright screen as well. Now regarding the webcam, here's a quick sample of me using the webcam. Here's the webcam for the Acer Predator Helios 300 and a little bit of audio sample for you, as you can tell. And if you're curious about the audio experience while you're listening to music or editing videos, here's a quick sample of the audio as well. Now, I do like the keyboard. That's probably one of my big highlighted features of the Acer Predator Helios 300. It has a nice soft touch matte key, and this is an RGB lit keyboard. Now, the trackpad is big. It's not necessarily wide, um, but it is a good size trackpad. And it's quiet. It has a good, solid, quiet click, and it's secured to the chassis very firmly. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, one thing I wanna point out is battery life. This laptop does not have the best battery life. This laptop does stay fairly cool and fairly quiet. However, when you turn it on turbo mode, you'll get about 60 decibels of fan noise, but really that's not super advantageous. I was surprised how well this laptop did optimized on the default mode and on the quiet modes. Still got great performance in creator apps. So let's jump into the performance benchmarks. First and foremost, we're gonna start out at Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core, and multi-core. And as you can see, this laptop held its own in all of those applications. For the longest time, Ryzen was really going over the top of Intel for multitasking. But as you can see, in both Cinebench and Geekbench, it hangs out right there with the Ryzen processors. That's why I'm saying Intel really is coming out strong and all the Ryzen fanboys should really pay attention to what Intel is doing. If you disagree with me, comment below. I'd love to hear your perspective. Now, all that multi-core and single-core performance in the simulated benchmarks is great. However, if you're gonna be considering this laptop for 3D modeling, there's other laptops that have performed better. As you can see in Autodesk Maya, the Legion 7 gets about 40 points higher than the Acer Predator Helios 300 in that benchmark. Although pointing our sights back towards Puget Systems After Effects benchmark, this laptop tops the charts out of any laptop I've reviewed on my channel, getting a 1011 in the After Effects standard benchmark and then pulling off a 773 in the rendering benchmark. So this laptop is definitely a contender for After Effects. Now, moving on to video editing, you can see the export times coming up on the screen now. And this laptop performs in line with all the other Intel laptops that I've had on my channel. With that Intel Quick Sync, Premiere Pro is a fantastic fantastic app for these Intel laptops. And regarding playback, you're gonna see great results with 4K, zero drop frames. You're gonna see pretty low drop frames for B-RAW, around 1900. And then as we move to red footage, you're gonna see a substantial more drop frames. Red footage is really struggling on laptops. I'm trying to optimize those tests more and more to try and get some better results, but overall laptops have really struggled with red footage. Taking a look at DaVinci Resolve, as always, Ryzen processors are slightly more optimized for DaVinci Resolve. So this laptop is still a good contender, though the export 
times are a little bit longer out of the Acer Predator Helios 300 than compared to something like the Legion 5 Pro. One test that I've been doing, and please comment below if you've been enjoying this test, is running the laptop on all the different fan modes to check the fan noise, thermals, and export times at those different modes. So here are those results. Moving forward to Photoshop, you can see that this is one of the top laptops for the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Using 16 gigs of RAM, this laptop performs very well. Now, I've also run the laptop at different fan modes in Photoshop to check the different scores, and here are those results as well. Build quality is good as far as the aluminum top cover and keyboard deck are concerned. However, there's some sharp edges right here on the front of the chassis as well as where the bottom panel fits into the side panels. And it's kind of a, you know, just more of a cheaper plastic. But the performance on this laptop is fantastic, especially that it has cool thermals and quieter fan noise. So links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you guys here in the next one.